Imagine a typical bustling day in the heart of Istanbul, when suddenly the ground beneath your feet begins to shake. Earthquakes by their very nature are sudden and unpredictable. They don't knock on the door or send a warning text. They just arrive unannounced, like an unexpected visitor. This is the reality for the people of Istanbul, as the city grapples with a 7.5 magnitude earthquake. In the blink of an eye, the lively city's symphony of bustling markets, honking cars and chattering crowds is drowned out by the ominous rumble of the earth. The ground becomes a swaying dance floor, and the towering structures, they're waltzing along, but it's not a graceful ballet, it's a frantic jig. The concrete giants sway, shudder, and in the worst cases, crumble. This is no ordinary day in Istanbul. The city's arteries, the roads, are splitting apart, creating chasms that swallow cars and disrupt the lifeblood of the city, its transportation. The bridges that once connected hearts, homes, and hopes are now precarious paths, teetering on the brink of collapse. The city, which was a coherent organism, is fragmenting into isolated islands. The general upheaval is palpable. The city's rhythm is disrupted, its melody replaced by the discordant notes of fear and confusion. The people, who seconds ago were engrossed in their daily routines, are now united by a common goal, survival. The cityscape is transforming before their eyes, and the familiar is now foreign. The earthquake is not just shaking the city's foundations, it's shaking its people, their lives, their sense of security. But amidst the chaos there's a glimmer of human spirit, resilience that rises from the rubble, a collective will to survive and rebuild. In just a matter of minutes, the city's routine is thrown into disarray, replaced by a desperate struggle for survival. But what exactly triggers this violent shaking of the earth? How does a peaceful city turn into a disaster zone? When we look beneath the surface, the earth is a living, breathing entity, with a heart of molten rock and veins of tectonic plates. These plates, like puzzle pieces, fit together to form the face of our planet. However, they're not static, they're continually shifting and grinding against each other, powered by the Earth's internal heat. As they move, stress builds up at their boundaries, creating fault lines. When the stress gets too much to bear, it releases in the form of an earthquake. Now imagine a 7.5 magnitude earthquake striking the city of Istanbul. This is a powerful force, equivalent to the energy released by the explosion of 2 billion kilograms of TNT. The ground beneath the city shakes violently, buildings sway and crack, and some may even collapse. The city's infrastructure is not built to withstand this level of seismic activity. Roads crack open, bridges crumble, and utility lines snap, causing widespread blackouts and cutting off vital communication channels. At the same time, the city's gas lines rupture, sparking fires that spread rapidly, fueled by the chaos. Water supply lines also break, leaving residents without access to clean drinking water, which in turn increases the risk of disease outbreaks. And this is just the immediate impact. The damage to infrastructure can take months, if not years, to rebuild, leaving residents without homes or access to essential services. The psychological impact can also be profound, with residents living in fear of aftershocks and struggling to come to terms with the loss of loved ones and their homes. In an instant, a peaceful city can be transformed into a disaster zone, a place of chaos and destruction. The shaking ground is merely the beginning, setting off a chain of devastating events. Once the shaking stops, the city emerges from the dust and debris, forever changed. In the immediate aftermath of the earthquake, the scene can only be described as one of utter devastation. Buildings collapsed, roads cracked open, and the once bustling city of Istanbul stands eerily silent. But amidst the rubble and despair, the indomitable spirit of humanity begins to shine through. Rescue efforts commence almost immediately. First responders, a brave breed of men and women, plunge into the wreckage, risking their own lives to save others. Their mission, to search for survivors buried under the collapsed structures. Each rescued individual is a triumph against the odds, a testament to the incredible resilience of the human spirit. The local community, too, comes together in an inspiring display of solidarity. Neighbors help neighbors, strangers assist strangers, and everyone contributes what they can to the relief efforts. Supplies of food, water, and medical aid start pouring in, and makeshift shelters are set up to house those who've lost their homes. 
Psychologists and mental health professionals play a crucial role during this time. The trauma of experiencing such a disaster can leave deep psychological scars. These professionals provide much needed emotional support, helping survivors cope with their loss and fear. The process of rebuilding begins, not just of the physical structures, but also of the lives disrupted. It is a slow and painstaking process, but one that is carried out with an unwavering resolve. The aftermath of an earthquake is a time of great challenge, but it is also a time of great resilience. It's a time when the strength of a community is tested, and more often than not, that strength shines through. As the city begins to rebuild, there's a sense of unity, of shared experience, and a collective will to rise from the ashes. The city, once lively and vibrant, now stands in ruins, its people left to pick up the pieces. But they do not stand alone, they stand together, united in their determination to rebuild, to recover, and to emerge stronger than before. Beyond the physical destruction, an earthquake leaves deep, invisible scars on its survivors. In the wake of an earthquake, the initial shock subsides, the dust settles, and the physical remnants of destruction become apparent. But the devastation doesn't stop there. The impact of such a calamity goes far beyond the tangible damage. It infiltrates the minds of those who experienced it, leaving indelible marks that are often overlooked. These are the invisible scars of disaster, psychological wounds that can be as deep, if not deeper, than the physical ones. Survivors of catastrophic events like earthquakes frequently grapple with an array of psychological issues. Stress and anxiety become unwelcome companions, turning everyday tasks into daunting challenges. Sleep becomes elusive as nightmares replay the traumatic events, and fear of aftershocks keeps them on constant alert. This heightened state of anxiety can lead to a debilitating condition known as post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, a mental health disorder that can persist long after the event. PTSD is not just a combat soldier's ailment. It can affect anyone who has experienced a traumatic incident. Symptoms can include flashbacks, nightmares, severe anxiety, and uncontrollable thoughts about the event. For earthquake survivors, these symptoms can make recovery an uphill battle, adding a mental health crisis to an already overwhelming situation. Mental health support in the aftermath of a disaster is as crucial as medical aid and rebuilding efforts. Psychological first aid, counseling services, and community support networks play a vital role in helping survivors cope with their experiences and start the healing process. Recognizing and addressing these invisible scars is a crucial part of the recovery journey. The aftermath of an earthquake is not just about picking up the pieces and rebuilding infrastructure. It's about acknowledging and addressing the deep psychological wounds that such a disaster can inflict. It's about understanding that the path to recovery is a complex process that goes beyond physical reconstruction. The path to recovery is not just about rebuilding infrastructure, but also healing minds. An earthquake's ripple effects extend far beyond the city's borders, impacting economies at large. When the ground shakes, so do the foundations of local businesses, livelihoods, and the broader economic structures. Imagine Istanbul, a bustling hub of commerce and culture. An earthquake of this magnitude would create a domino effect, disrupting local businesses, tourism, and even international trade. Small businesses may crumble, and with them, jobs are lost. And it's not just about those directly employed. Consider the vendors, suppliers, and other businesses that rely on them. The economic aftershocks echo through the entire supply chain. And then there's the cost of rebuilding. Infrastructure, homes, businesses, hospitals, the expenses quickly mount. The government may need to reallocate resources from other sectors, impacting the country's overall economic growth. International aid and loans can help, but these are often a double-edged sword with long-term debts and obligations. Tourism, a significant contributor to Istanbul's economy, would take a hit too. The city's iconic landmarks, its vibrant markets and historic sites all could be at risk. And with them, the flow of international visitors may dwindle, leaving a gaping hole in the city's revenue. But here's the thing. These economic consequences aren't as inevitable as they might seem. With effective disaster management and planning, their impact can be mitigated. Preparing for the worst-case scenario isn't pessimistic. It's pragmatic. It means establishing robust building codes, 
creating contingency plans, and investing in infrastructure that can withstand such disasters. It's about creating a safety net, so when the earth shakes, the economy doesn't have to. A city's resilience is tested not only by its ability to rebuild, but also by its capacity to recover economically. The story of an earthquake doesn't end when the ground stops shaking. It continues in the months and years of recovery that follow. And it is in this recovery where the true strength of a city and its people is revealed. Are we ever truly prepared for natural disasters like earthquakes? This is a question that we must all grapple with. Earthquakes like the one that rocked Istanbul are unpredictable and often devastating. But there are steps we can take to be prepared. Planning, practicing drills, and adhering to building standards are all key components of earthquake preparedness. Planning is not just about having an emergency kit, though that is important. It is also about knowing the safest places in your home or workplace, understanding how to protect yourself during an earthquake, and having a plan for communication and reunion with loved ones afterward. Drills are an essential part of preparation. Regularly practicing what to do during an earthquake can make the actions second nature, reducing panic and confusion when the real thing hits. Remember, drop, cover, and hold on. Building standards are another critical aspect. Buildings designed and constructed to withstand seismic forces can significantly reduce the damage caused by earthquakes and save lives. But preparedness is not just an individual responsibility. It is also a community and governmental one. Communities can organize training, share resources, and create support networks. Governments, on the other hand, can enforce building codes, invest in early warning systems, and ensure the availability of emergency services. The earthquake in Istanbul serves as a stark reminder of the power of nature and the vulnerability of our urban environments, but it also illuminates the potential for resilience. With each disaster, we learn more about how to protect ourselves and our communities. As we remember Istanbul, let's also remember the importance of preparedness. Let's commit to learning, preparing, and supporting each other. Because when we do, we can significantly reduce the impact of these disasters, saving lives and livelihoods. It is our responsibility to learn from these disasters, to prepare, and to support those affected. Together we can build a safer, more resilient world.